Hello, fellow guitar geeks. I'm Andy, and this is the Eros Five State Distortion from Walrus Audio. The Eros promises to be an absolute beast of a distortion pedal. It's got five different clipping modes. It's got adjustable bass and treble. It's got a clean blend for all you bass players and low-tuned freaks and experimenters out there. I've already played it at 42 Gear Street Part 3, and um, I didn't get on with it too well. So I'm hoping that's going to change in this video. So I will give you first my top five tones. <laughs> Having just recorded that, I can already tell you that I prefer the pedal now to when I first tried it at 42 Gear Street Part 3, and I'll give you the secret as to why I prefer it now in a little bit, because that's what people on YouTube do, right? They tease something and then they say, ah, oh, we'll tell you in a moment. Stay tuned and all that. Anyway, let's, uh, let's run over what the pedal does, its features, its functions, and the stuff that it can do. First up, we've got some housekeeping in, out, power in, on and off foot switch. The on and off foot switch is one of those sort of semi-silent ones. It's like not, not it's somewhere between a massive click and silent. It's got a, a nice sturdy feel to it. I, I really, really like that. And I would much prefer to be pressing it with my foot right now. Anyway, right, we've got six knobs. Let's tell you what they do. Let's go straight for the one in the middle at the bottom. This is the mode knob. And it has five different modes. They all click into place. We've got click, 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 click. Basically, because it's called eras, it's supposed to give you all the different eras of distortion from something that's fairly old to something that's fairly modern. And there are so many combinations of tones in this pedal that it's impossible for me to cover them all. But, and with all different guitars and amps, but um, I, I kind of think that that claim is rather a large claim, but I think, I think so far it's working. Right, okay, we've got bass and treble. Pretty obvious what they do. Um, roughly in the middle does nothing. Left of the middle is a Natalie and Brulia album and also it cuts the bass and adds a bit more bass just there. And then in the middle here is the treble, left of the middle, Natalie, and right is adding more treble. So it's a really powerful EQ. I'll run through it in a moment, we'll experiment. Up the top, we've got in the middle, the blend. So all the way this way is blending the least amount of the pedal with your clean signal. So uh, what it doesn't do, is it doesn't go completely clean. So if you have the pedal off, you have a clean tone. If you turn the pedal on and have this all the way down, you're still getting some of the iris coming through. It's not set at 0% mix, which is interesting. And then all the way up here is 100% and no clean. On the left is the master volume of the pedal. On the right is the amount of gain which so far to my ears, I don't really want to take it past around 12. It starts to compress uh, too much and not get muddy, but certainly you don't get any um, benefits from going past about there, at least so far. We'll have to find out if that changes in the duration of this video. Okay, wonderful. Do you remember that I said there was a secret as to why I prefer the pedal now compared to before? Well, I'm gonna give you that secret straight away because you've waited long enough. 
The secret is I'm now using it through the Marshall SV20, a plexi style Marshall amp. Whereas before when I was at Henning's event, I was using it through the Tone King, whatever he uses for all his pedal videos. And that's his favorite clean tone. So I came here expecting to put it through my Fender Deluxe Reverb, which is my favorite clean tone pedal platform. And um, the Eris does not sound good through a clean tone pedal platform. In my opinion, it sounds far better going through something that's already slightly pushed. So pedal is off. I'll give you the tone of the Fender Deluxe Reverb, which is there. And we've got, where are we? Just there. <laughs> Now here's the Fender with the Walrus Audio Eros. Now, switching over to the Marshall SV20, which is quite crunchy already. Now put the Walrus Audio Eras through the Marshall, which is what you've been hearing so far in the video. It sounds completely different and, in my opinion, far better. And that is the difference between the two amps. So if you're going to use this pedal, I would 100% recommend putting it through something that is already crunchy, already slightly overdriven. You're gonna get far um, superior tones in, in my mind. That's what I'm doing in this video. And I'm sure somebody could get it good with, with the Fender Deluxe Reverb, but I couldn't get it sounding good with the Tone King. I really don't like it with the Fender. I do like it with the Marshall. I'm using this, the Kurt Cobain Signature Jaguar from Fender with a super distortion in the bridge. It is gorgeous. And probably for the remainder of this video, I'll be running it through the Marshall for consistency. You're hearing it uh, through a mic'd up cab, which has got V30s in it. Also, I'm blending in the Captor X from two notes, just so I can represent what I hear in the room. Okay, here is a tone exploration. I've got a looper pedal. I'm gonna lay down a loop and we're gonna mess with the knobs and see what happens. The first thing you probably notice is the clean blend changes everything. So if I play uh, just a riff with the clean blend and mess with it again. That changes a lot. You can use that setting to have a faux sort of one amp clean, one amp dirty sound. So it sounds like you're using two amps or you can use it for bass where you can blend in some of the original signal. Or you could also just mess with the amount of distortion through a distorted amp already or play it with other pedals before the, this pedal and bring in more of the sound of that original overdrive or distortion that you use before the Eros. I think this makes it extremely versatile. Now, there are far too many settings on this pedal for me to run through everything, and it's simply not possible. What I will say is that 
the tone ranges so much on this pedal. It's not like having five different distortion pedals. It's like if you heard that distortion that I just played and you thought, hmm, that was a bit raspy, which it was, you can switch it up to something else, which is the same kind of character distortion, but less raspy or more bassy. And, and indeed, add more bass if you want to have low gain, because with the lower gains, there is a, a certain lacking of bass, which you can dial back in with the bass knob. And indeed, with the treble knob, take out some of that harshness. <laughs> Yeah, so as I said, an absolute variety of distortions, all in that same kind of flavor, but also very, very different. And that's because the clipping stages are different, the tone is different, it's doing different things, but it's still stay staying in the parameters of being the era's distortion. I've switched guitar to this, the Maybach Leicester uh, Aged 59. It's a Les Paul, of course, with Amber Spirit 59 pickups. They are more classic rocky, so I thought we'd get some more rocky tones out of this in case you're not familiar with the Kurt Cobain Jaguar, even though that is a really cool guitar. Let's try the Eros with something a bit more mainstream. So, just the amp. <laughs> The outputs on the pickups on this is certainly lower and more classic rock compared to the super distortion in that. But um, I'm going to play with the gain on here and I can't go through all the settings, it's just going to take too long. However, uh, Walrus have said in the manual that number four and number five are thicker and warmer and more for rhythm stuff, uh, which I guess indicates that one and two and three are going from lead to, you know, going through um, the spectrum of distortion offered by the Eris. So I'm going to do some, some rhythm stuff with four and five, see how that sounds. <laughs> I like that a lot. Oh, that is thick. That is meaty. That is beastly. Um, <laughs> let's bring up some more bass. I want to feel some more trouser flapping.
For this clean blend here, it, it sounds a little bit odd with this guitar. It certainly sounded to me better with the with the Kurt Cobain Jaguar. <laughs> Oh, now I don't know. Now, being a Walrus audio pedal, it should be built very well. But let's find out for certain by opening up the box and have a little look inside. This is one of my favorite parts of videos because you never know what you're gonna find inside pedals. Um, take off my sticky, there we go, and screws. Okay, here's the part that makes pedal builders nervous. We have a look inside. Ta-da! It's got stuff, lots of stuff. Um, now, I don't really understand pedals from the sense of looking inside them, but I can tell things that have been done well and things that have not been done well. Looks good to me. No, seriously, um, you can see the, the parts are high quality. That's a really nice switch on there with a the relay. Um, yeah, what can I say? If you understand that, fantastic. If you don't, I'm here to tell you that that's built very well and will not cause you any is issues. Hang on. Nope. Well done, Warris Audio. Greatly built pedal. Right, time to review the pedal. What I like best first is that it's got that characteristic that I've mentioned several times, that Eros sound, that character. But by using the different modes and, and changing the different clipping stages, you can change that to your favorite version of the Eros. So if you like that, if you like what you're hearing and it's, it's not quite right, it's too something. I think that you can change that within the parameters of the Eros to sound like something you might like and then further tweak it using the bass and treble and then even further tweak it by using the clean blend which is actually a lot more powerful than I imagined when using it with an amp that's already kind of overdriven. It gives this real thick, uh, almost Queens of the Stone Age tone in, in some points. Uh, and then the gain, um, for me I wasn't really using the gain past there but I wasn't really doing a lot of lead stuff in this video because I don't generally, but for heavy riffing, um, yeah, you'll find something there for sure. And certainly um, I like it. So that's my favorite thing. My least favorite thing, that's gonna take a bit of thinking about. I got it, I know what my least favorite thing is. It's the same as my favorite thing. It's the fact that it's so tweakable, it could be off-putting to some people. Whereas if you have a rat style pedal or a DS1, for example, that's got like tone, volume and gain and on and off, that's it. So you either like that pedal or you don't. With the Eros, for someone that is not willing to experiment and wants something instantly good, they might turn it on to setting one and say, ugh, that sounds naff and then forget to change it to actually number five or, or through any of the other numbers. I think the fact that it's tweakable is both its biggest uh, high point and also its biggest low point. That being said, um, just if you buy it, if you try it out, have some patience with it. Because as I said, I really didn't like this pedal at first and I was surprised that Walrus Audio were bringing out a distortion because they're more well known for doing cleaner tones and doing some great reverbs and some great delays and some choruses. Uh, they did the, the overdrive, uh, the ages, which is the overdrive, and then the eras is, is the distortion. So I'm wondering if there's going to be another fuzz coming soon. I wonder what that would be called. Years, ages, eras, decades, eons. I don't know. But um, yeah, I, I, I do like the pedal. Uh, it's not my Favorite distortion, I still do love a Rat. I still do love a DS1. This has some DS1 qualities to it, but DS1 that's um, more hi-fi, so more high quality distortion. Also, I guess another downside of the pedal is that it is noisy when you're adding a lot of gain. So beware, if you have this and you do not have a noise gate, I was using one throughout this video. It's back there. Um, it's the Decimator 2 from ISP and it is necessary with this. If I turn, if I plug it back in and turn the uh, ISP off, we hear the noise that's coming through. So it's plugged back in and... So 
So it is introducing a fair amount of noise, but that is normal when you're adding this much gain. Don't think that this pedal is is faulty or anything like that, or it's, it's low quality. It's not. It's just the fact that you're adding super amounts of gain, or I'm adding super amounts of gain, and it's causing noise. With a noise uh, gate, then um, you'll be fine. Chill out. Promise. If you don't have one, get one. Also, the fact that I prefer it through an already overdriven, just over the edge amp. I think it needs something as a bass tone to do that. So maybe if you haven't got an amp that you like distorted, you might want to combine this Eros with another overdrive before it, or you might actually prefer it with a clean amp and just totally disagree with me. And that's also fine. I've seen some people playing it with a Tone Master Deluxe from Fender, and that's a clean Fender Deluxe reverb solid state version. So. Yeah, there's, there's something for everybody everywhere, isn't there? Horses for courses and other cliches. Let's talk money. It's coming in at around 200 bucks, 200 US dollars, 200 euros, depending on where you are right now. I think that's around the top sort of price that I'd pay for it. If it were 150, this would be an absolute no brainer. Just absolute no brainer, add it to your distortion pedal collection. At 200, I need a little extra push to love it, and I do love it. So spending the money, 200 bucks, I'm not just gonna run out and buy it straight away at 200. At 150, as I said, yeah, no brainer. If you like it and you can part with $200, then um, there are some affiliate links down in the video description. You can use those and uh, show me some love. But you know, don't feel any pressure. As for the type of distortion, it doesn't go into fuzz territory, neither does it really go into overdrive territory in the way that I've used it today. So if you're using it through a clean amp, then I'm sure you can bring that gain down and get some overdrive out of it. But it doesn't go as far as to fuzz up, to glitch out, to do anything of that, at least in the way that I've used it. My final say on the Eris distortion is that if you like the characteristic, if you like the tone of what you're hearing, but you need it to be tweaked, then you can tweak it. The bass and treble is very, very usable. It's not too much, but it is just enough. And the modes changes everything going on inside the pedal, so you can actually find something to fit your sound. And that, my geeky friend, is the end of the video, which means you've made it to the end of the video club and to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite. When you leave me a comment telling me maybe which your favorite mode of the distortion pedal was, maybe it was number two, to take a guess. If it is, congratulations. Um, when you leave that comment, please also include the phrase, Eras, I thought you said Eros. And that will let me know that you made it to this part of the video you're in the gang, you're in the club, the end of the video club, congratulations. Since 2020, it's been going a while, I'm surprised we're still doing this. If you ever want me to stop, by the way, just let me know. Speaking of stopping, that's it from me and the Eris Distortion from Walrus Audio. I've had a jolly time, I hope you've enjoyed yourself and go and grab a guitar and find the nearest amp near you, plug it in and make some music. And if you do want one of these, check out the links in the video description. I'll see you in one of these videos right over there or at a later point. Bye-bye.